last video, we created our own class to call a custom application that I have. And it all worked, and we leveraged HTTP party a little bit. But I want to show you now what we can do if we want to uh, do a few shortcuts. And to do it, I'm also going to base some of this off of some of the documentation that HTTP party has. Uh, so you can see it and see it working with another application, a much more full featured application uh, called Stack Exchange. So I'm going to start off, make sure you do not uh, comment out this, uh, these require calls up here. I'm going to create a variable called response and then I'm going to call HTTP party and call the get method on it. And inside of it, I'm going to pass it a string. And this is going to be the API. I'm going to copy this URI over and I'm going to pull it in from Stack Exchange. So you don't have to worry about what's inside here. Every API you ever work with is going to give you this uh, a URL to call. And now let's see what we can do by using some of the built-in HTTP party methods. So all we have to do, we, since we have our response variable, is call these different methods right here. So I can do body and let's come back here and say Ruby API example and let's see what gets printed out and look at this it is called the actual stack exchange API and it brought in the body from each one of the items that they had in the database uh, that we queried. So this brought in a uh, you know, certain number, they always limit it you, so it brought in a certain number of the questions along with a lot of uh, data around it. So this brings in, you can see has a profile image and you could copy you know, one of these URLs right here and you could come and paste it inside and see, look, we have a picture of a guy and that's his gravatar image. And each one of these, you can come in and see all the data attributes, their reputation and everything like that, along with the questions that they have. So that's pretty cool. That is if we're bringing the body of the response in. So now let's I'm going to comment that out. And now instead of body, let's do the response code. So come here run it again and see this returned a status code of 200 which means that it worked so that's good let's comment that one out and let's do another one these are all the class methods or not all these are some of the class methods for HTTP party uh, we can do message now and see what that gives us it gives us a message of okay. So a good example of how you would use code or message. Code is one I use quite a bit when I'm calling APIs. Uh, if I'm doing a automated test or something and I want to see, okay, is that API working? Is the call I'm gonna do working? Instead of calling the API and bringing in the body and having this really long call, the code will simply bring me a message and say, that's a 200 status code, which means you're all good to go. Or it may be a 404, which means that this does not even exist at all. Or a 500, which means that uh, you have an issue with, or they have an issue with the server, that kind of thing. So message works. I'm going to do a few more right here. And this is, last one I'm going to do is going to be headers.inspect. And let's see right here, run this. And there you go, you get all the headers. So you can see the cache, you can see some of the different credentials, the date, uh, the content length, some of the things that are associated with the header. And this is all brought to you uh, in a hash format. So great job if you went through that. You now know how to query the Stack Exchange API, which is pretty cool, especially for the small amount of code that you had to do and you see the uh, how efficient it is when you use gems and when you use them properly and all the built-in methods you get with them. In the next video, I'm going to show how we can call the same Stack Exchange API but kind of reverse engineer what we did up here and create our own class that calls that and prints the uh, different parameters and different uh, API results to the console.